All right, welcome to the march for a clean energy revolution, everybody. All right, well, we are lining up for the nuclear-free, carbon-free contingent right here, where we're going to be marching for a 100% renewable energy revolution. So we're going to have a few speakers who are going to talk to you about some of the reasons why we're marching for a nuclear-free, carbon-free future. And right now, I'm going to hand it to Leona Morgan from New Mexico with the Nano Nukes. My name is Leona Morgan, and I came from New Mexico. I'm with the Nano Nukes, and I work on stopping uranium extraction. Nuclear energy is dirty. It is not clean. And we know this because for decades, my people have been suffering the consequences of uranium extraction on Navajo Nation and several other indigenous communities. Nuclear power is environmental racism. It targets communities of color. A majority of uranium mining has occurred on indigenous lands worldwide, as well as nuclear weapons, construction, and testing. Together, I am here with the nuclear-free, carbon-free contingent to stop dirty nuclear energy production. Today, we're in Philadelphia in front of City Hall, and we are going to march in the climate march for a clean energy revolution. So my name is Tim Judson. I'm with the Nuclear Information and Resource Service. Uh, we're a national environmental organization that works with grassroots groups across the country to stop nuclear power and radioactive waste. Uh, so we're working with uh, a bunch of groups from across the country, including Beyond Nuclear and Nuclear Inf Energy Information Service and others, to organize a nuclear-free, carbon-free contingent. So we are here in, in Philadelphia, uh, in Pennsylvania, which is actually the second most nuclear-powered state in the entire country. There are nine nuclear reactors operating in Pennsylvania, and Philadelphia is actually the, the major city that's most endangered by nuclear power of any, of any major city in the country. Where we stand today, we are within 50 miles of eight different operating nuclear reactors. If there were an accident in any one of those reactors, it could blow radiation downwind to this city and make Philadelphia uninhabitable. In fact, we're about 70 miles downwind from the Three Mile Island nuclear power plant which had a meltdown in 1979 and almost cost the city of Harrisburg. There's still one operating nuclear plant operating there, and it's, in it's an old reactor that's uneconomical, its operator is cutting costs there, and we hope that they will shut that reactor down. But unfortunately, Philadelphia Electric Company and its parent company, Exelon, which is the largest nuclear power company in the country, are seeking bailouts for old nuclear power plants like this all over the country. And as they are asking taxpayers and ratepayers to bail out the nuclear industry a second and third time for hundreds of millions of dollars. What that means is that if we're going to be forced to pay bailouts to keep these old, aging, uncompetitive, uneconomical, dirty, dangerous nuclear power plants going, what that means is we're being forced to subsidize environmental racism in the mining of uranium and the dumping of nuclear waste. This is unacceptable to us. And the thing is that we know that the, that the clean energy revolution is here. We don't need fossil fuels. We don't need nuclear power. We have solar. We have wind. We have the other clean energy solutions we need to convert this country and the entire world rapidly to a completely sustainable energy economy. And that's what we are here to march for today. I want to introduce Kevin Camps from Beyond Nuclear. Uh, I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about radioactive waste. And uh, he also pointed out that it's not just as, as Leona so eloquently put it, the front end of this nuclear fuel chain, it's the back end too that often targets indigenous peoples. And uh, one of the great heroes of, uh, of this movement is a former board member who passed away a few years ago, Nears, uh, Grace Thorpe, Snack and Fox Indian, who uh, served on the board of Nears, was with Native Americans, uh, across the country trying to stop these dumps targeted at their lands. And uh, President Obama actually honored Grace Thorpe in March of 2009. It was uh, Women's History Month, and he named several women environmental champions, including Rachel Carson, but also Grace Thorpe. And what Grace did was when her Sac and Fox Indian tribe was targeted by the Department of Energy, by the nuclear waste negotiator, back in the 1980s and early 1990s for a parking lot dump, centralized interim storage for high-level radioactive waste. They were going to park it at the Sac and Fox Indian Reservation in Oklahoma. 
She got busy, and within just a few days' time, she had ousted her tribal council, who were seeing dollar signs. They wanted the money. They needed. They need money. They're low income, and that's the shame, the environmental racism, the radioactive racism of the nuclear power industry and the Department of Energy. They dangle money in front of communities that are low income and desperate and uh, try to get them to consent, in quotation marks, to take this most deadly poison that humans have ever generated into their community where it would then stay probably forever. They say it's centralized interim storage, it's de facto parking lot dumps. And we're very much facing that issue right now, yet again, uh, they're proposing uh, the top target in the country is West Texas. It's a facility called Waste Control Specialists Limited Liability Corporation in a largely Hispanic area of West Texas, right on the border with New Mexico. And uh, there's already an application to build and operate this facility. And what that would mean is that trucks and trains and barges on the roads and rails and waterways of this country through most states carry high-level radioactive waste in unprecedented shipment numbers through major cities, major metropolitan areas, and park it on uh, a low-income people of color community in West Texas. The number two target is in New Mexico, where Leona's from, in the right nearby to waste control specialists in Texas. It's very near the waste isolation pilot plant which is a repository for military plutonium wastes. Now they want to park the commercial high-level radioactive waste there too. That's the second target. And then they're also targeting Native American reservations. They're also targeting uh, nuclear power plant sites like Dresden, Illinois, Morris, Illinois, which has three reactors. 3,000 tons of high-level radioactive waste is already there, and they want to bring high-level radioactive waste from across the country and park it there. And the good news is, as with Grace Thorpe, we have stopped. Grace Thorpe led the effort to stop the Department of Energy from doing parking lot dumps for high-level radioactive waste. They actually targeted the entire federally recognized uh, Indian community of this country, many hundreds of tribes. 60 of those tribes, like hers, said yes, we're interested. So the worst of the threats were at 60 reservations. She helped to stop that. And uh, the worst the worst targeting happened at places like Mescalero Apache in New Mexico again. Just downwind of the Trinity blast, we just observed yet again the July 16th anniversary of the Trinity bomb during World War II, the practice bomb for Nagasaki. That was upwind of Mescalero Apache. They were targeted for a parking lot dump. Uh, Skull Valley Go Jukes in New Mexico and um, Utah was targeted for a parking lot dump, got licensed by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. That was, in that particular instance, it was the Nuclear Racism Commission that licensed that dump. We have stopped these again and again through uh, grassroots effort, working with traditional Native Americans, and we have to do it again this time. And the last thing I'll talk about is Yucca Mountain, Nevada, which is Western Shoshone Indian and Paiute territory as recognized by the United States government in the Treaty of Ruby Valley of 1863, a peace and friendship treaty that was violated by the creation of the Nevada nuclear weapons test site where some 1,000 nuclear weapons were exploded, many of them in the atmosphere, on the surface of the land, and then hundreds more underground, many of which leaked. And for 25 years now, Yucca Mountain, Nevada has been targeted as the, the permanent burial site, the dump for high-level radioactive waste. We've stopped that too. We need to stop it again. The Republicans want to resurrect the Yucca Mountain dump zombie. So we got a lot of work to do to say no to radioactive racism, no to environmental racism, stop these parking lot dumps, stop these mobile Chernobyls, stop Yucca Mountain. Thank you very much.